fine folks, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is America of America's Abstracts. Yes, if you are wondering, that is my birth name. If you're new here, hi! I like to do Florida as a way to distract myself from my various chronic illnesses like Lyme disease. And so as a result of that, I do either A, a creation video or a how-to video twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays. So for today's video, I am going to show you how I tape up the back of my uh, wood cutouts. I typically use birch wood. Um, there's been a few times that I use MDF. Um, it's not my favorite. Um, I like birch wood, it's a little bit thicker. Um, when you see my rounds, they're, they're birch wood usually. Um, I guess there was one pine wood that I had, um, but that was the rounded edge one that I had for the 1000K video, which I'll link that right here. <laughs> I think it's up here. <laughs> Today, you're going to see how I prep up wood after I've already sealed it. That'll be another video, how I show you how I seal them. All right, folks, let's get to it. Today, we are going to show how I prepare a wooden piece. Um, for reference, I do two coats of the golden acrylic GAC 100, two coats of that on both sides and on the side. So this side has a lot more knots compared to this side. This side looks like a really good front. So I'm going to tape up the back side of this today. So my typical size and brand that I use is frog tape. It's the green painter's type tape. Um, I've seen this at Menards. I've seen this at Home Depot, Sherwin-Williams when I'm there getting my different colored pillows. So I do have the thinnest size that they have, but that is upstairs. I use that to prep up like sm super small items like my pop sockets. The other one is 1.88 yards by 60 yards, 48 millimeters by 55, but it's their thinner. So I usually carry all three sizes that I've seen available on me, but typically to be able to cover large sizes, I use their biggest one. So we're going to be taping up this 12 inch round with our largest frog tape today so I can show you how after I have sealed the wood how I prep it for painting. So when I have to do mass amounts like when I've done my unicorns and there's a lot of small cuts I will usually do that up in my room so I can like watch some TV as I'm doing it but like individual canvases I'll usually do down here while I'm actually listening to music doing my art so um, like I said, usually I have it on the spinner even when I'm just taping. It makes everything so much easier. Um, yeah, I just essentially make sure that everything's going to be covered. I do a rough cut and then I cut around that. So since this side had the more knots, this side is going to be the back that I will just paint over black before I add my um, additional signature and all of that. Which, to be honest, I think I'm gonna start doing my signature up front. What do you folks think? I know more main artists do it up front, but tell me what you think. Comment down below what you think might be the best idea, whether I still sign on the back or I start signing on the front I probably do initials that's kind of what I what my basic signature is based off of is my main initials and then I 
sign off of that, so. While I am taping this up, in case if you didn't already know by watching my other videos, I have a sale going on my website, www.americasabstracts.com. I'll have that displayed right here as I'm taping it up. All of my older wall hangings from about this year to about six months ago, I will have for 20% off of what I listed them at. And to be honest, I've always kind of listed them a little bit cheaper. Um, so, even what I'll be listing right now is still a darn good deal, even at 20% off. So, feel free, go check my website out. I appreciate it. Go and see what appeals to you. I also have jewelry, I have stash jars, I got multi-purpose clips, um, pop sockets. I am one of the only ones that I know that actually does the bloom on their pop sockets, as opposed to acrylic skin jewelry, like how I do for my jewelry. So, how cool is that? I just did a rough tape of the 12 inch round. I went and grabbed what I normally use as a box cutter. Um, I just got a Westcott multi-pack from Sam's Club for that. Um, so I wanted to also show you how thin, in comparison, the really thin one is, because I went and grabbed that, well, I grabbed my uh, gosh darn box cutter. Damn Lyme disease, it really helps. It really messes with my uh, cognitive functioning. But, like I said, art is definitely what helps. Alright, like I said, I use all three sizes that I've seen of frog tape. So, we're gonna see the sizes. So, this is the thinnest one. This is what I typically will use when I am taping off smaller objects like my uh, pop sockets um like my smaller stash jars things like that this medium size is typically what i use for about everything else and then this large size is what i use for when i'm going through bigger canvases people ask is it really much better than painter's tape yes every time I've used it um, it always comes off easier um, comes off more in one piece and is very true to the 21 day guarantee of it'll come off just fine up until 21 days so if you are doing a set of coasters tape it off for the painting take it off after you know it's dry to the touch let it cure that way, re-tape it up before you resin top coat, and you should have no issue pulling off when you do your top coat. So, I hope that was some good tips. Like I said, I use three different sizes of the frog tape. Um, typically Sherwin-Williams will have like 30% off, like they're like different things. Sometimes I can get these on sale. Anytime I try to find them on sale, I try to get them as much as possible so i hope that was helpful and we will be cutting to how i actually trim it with my box cutter up on the screen when I do any sort of wood whether it be regular wood pine Baltic birch MDF I like to prep with a at least 
on the two coats of GAC 100 and then I let that sit and dry and then I like to tape the underside of each project in future art works you'll be seeing me do two coats of gesso whether white or black and that is just to ensure extra those coats of gesso I'm not gonna have to worry about wood grain coming up so that'll be nice if anybody in the wonder wants to know what my new painting shirt is it's a Pokemon shirt I'm 30 yes I still play Pokemon what of it message me find me I might play some of the po new, newer Pokemon with you I need to do some raids so get at me. All right. This is now all covered. Yes, that doesn't look even because it wasn't even. There we go. All even. All right, guys. So now I've shown you how to tape up the back of like a wood round. And for this, I'm going to show you how I tape up my coasters, specifically the square ones. So, still using the same old frog tape, but I like to use two different sizes for the uh, taping up. Alright, so what I do to minimize the amount of waste is... Right in the middle. Alright, four on each side. Schmack down the middle. And then I take the bigger one and then I do two shifts. As you can see, I don't even measure. I just kind of guesstimate how much the width of the tile is. I always want more because I can always cut off the extra. Yes, that's a little bit wasteful, but it gets me an exact, precise right to where I want on the tile. Push down all nice and good so then the paint doesn't get underneath. And then same thing on this other side. Pull up a little bit, cut it, and then same thing on this other side. There we go, right on the edge. And then, as simple as that, all I have to do is now cut off these two edges because these ones are to the edge. Pretty neat, huh? All right. Just take my exact, my box cutter exact knife. There we go. And now if I have like tinier pieces like if I'm doing my pop sockets, I'll save these pieces sometimes. But I don't think I need them for anything, so I'm just going to flip them. Alright, that is how I do a tile. I do that for my practice one so it makes it easier to take them off. 